So the role of uh, immunotherapy in gastric cancer is based on the premise that relative to a lot of other malignancies, gastric and GEJ cancers do have a good number of neoantigen formation. So that, that, that is one of the principal uh, mechanisms by perhaps why immunotherapy might work in this cancer is that when compared to colorectal cancer, for example, or pancreatic cancer, we have a fair number of neoantigen formation in these malignancies, which could make them sensitive to immunotherapy. Beyond that, there are other subtypes, such as MSI high, which represents only a small percentage of patients with gastric and G-junction cancer, but is particularly sensitive to uh, checkpoint inhibition. Um, the role of the EBV subtype in the TCGA sub subset is still being evaluated. It, it's not, it makes scientific credible sense that the group of patients who are virally mediated, such as EBV, may have uh, particular sensitivity to the checkpoint inhibitors as well. But um, some of the retrospective analyses are now being, only being done now, so we're not entirely sure whether that data will be supported uh, by the clinical data. Um, it's going to take a little more time to figure out which are the optimal subtypes with this disease uh, where immunotherapy may have a role. So um, it, it's an exciting time in many ways because there's a lot of immunotherapy drugs out there and there's a lot of potential combinations out there. So the Keywood Note 059 study was presented at ASCO this year and it targeted patients beyond second line therapy, third line, and these were and beyond heavily pretreated patient population. Uh, and patients were permitted to go on cohort one uh, regardless of PDL1 status. So PDL1 tumor expression was tested and known, but both PDL1 positive and PDL1 negative tumors were permitted to enter. This was a monotherapy pembrolizumab study in treatment of refractory uh, metastatic disease. And what we've demonstrated, what the study has demonstrated, and what we note is that tumors have a dramatic response to pembrolizumab, and there were a majority of the patients uh, were PDL1 positive, so up to 50 to 60 percent of uh, tumors are uh, positive by the PDL1 uh, immunohistochemistry test. Uh, and the PDL1 positivity was helpful in this uh, population to select patients who were, uh, who were the most likely to benefit from pembrolizumab. The overall response rate in PDL1 positive patients in third line setting was 21%. Uh, and again, unprecedented data, uh, and therefore it, uh, the FDA granted uh, approval of pembrolizumab. Uh, based on this data, based on the response rate and promising overall survival uh, and uh, pending some of the follow-up uh, phase three studies uh, to demonstrate actually long-term be benefit from these agents. A uh, similar agent, nivolumab, uh, was uh, also uh, approved in Japan uh, for use in a third line setting, also in metastatic gastric cancer in a randomized phase three study uh, randomized against placebo. And again, so uh, for the first time, we're seeing that a similar proportion of patients with metastatic gastric cancer in Asia and the West are benefiting from these drugs. So same um, biology and similarities uh, that we see, uh, which are uh, quite reassuring. Interestingly, in the, uh, for the nivolumab trial, it's the Attraction 2 study, PDL1 was not predictive of response or survival with anti-PD-1 therapy. So again, a lot to be learned about PD-L1 as a biomarker, uh, but uh, right now as it stands uh, in the Keynote 059 study, the responses in PD-L1 positive patients were higher, although there were PD-L1 negative patients that responded as well. Uh, and the FDA approval right now is for PD-L1 positive patients only for pembrolizumab in third or line or beyond. The, uh, ra the value of checkpoint inhibitors in gastric cancer is, seems to be comparable to what we're seeing in many other solid tumors. In the rare patient who's MSI high, that is clearly an indication for the checkpoint inhibitors. Generically, there is activity, perhaps 15 to 20 percent response rates. Uh, uh, the so-called keynote studies, which is Keytruda, which is pembrolizumab, they're pretty much across the board. There's a 15 to 20 percent response rate, whether first line or second line or third line, in, uh, it's, it's, it's not clear to me who benefits and who doesn't. 
There's been interest in looking at the PDL1 expression. It's not clear to me that that makes a difference. In general, though, I think for patients with gastric cancer, it's hard to not try a checkpoint inhibitor at some point because there's some patients who have dramatic responses. The uh, pembrolizumab in particular, though, they've done a series of studies. And again, uh, to my knowledge, uh, their uh, results are not all in, but on average about a 20% response rate one of the challenges, of course, these studies accrue r remarkably quickly, and uh, so we, we, we are not, we, we might be, have two or three patients on a study, you don't get much experience with it. I will say, though, that in the patients we've treated on study with pembrolizumab, we've seen a couple of dramatic responses, and all you have to do is see one response to believe that the treatment may have effect. Uh, why these checkpoint inhibitors would work in gastric cancer or GE junction cancer compared to others, we don't understand, although those cancers may be more related to toxins and sort of environmental stimuli that may make the cancers a little more mutated. Uh, again, the, the data remains to be shown definitively what the role for these checkpoint inhibitors are in gastric cancer.